If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. All right, in this episode of Mind Pump, I got the opportunity to interview uh, a very intelligent individual, Dr. Zach Bush. He's a triple board certified physician, which uh, for those of you in medicine, you know just how rare that is. He's an expert on uh, leaky gut and uh, on digestion. Um, We have a great conversation in this episode about some of the things that may be causing issues with your gut and why that's a big deal and what you can do about it. Also, uh, this month we are running a promotion. A promotion, you say? (laughs) Enroll in any of our bundles, any of our bundles, including our super bundle, which is one year of exercise programming. In other words, if you enroll in the bundle, you've got all of 2008 planned out for you. You know what exercises to do, when to do them. You know the tempo, the reps. You have uh, exercise video demos. I mean, it's all set up for you. Different phases. You'll be changing your workouts as you go along. The super bundle, if you enroll in that or any of our other bundles, you will get a free Mind Pump t-shirt. We're going to be doing this for the entire month of January People love our shirts for whatever reason. It's a legit reason. shirt. It is. You got to highlight that. Fact. It is. And for whatever reason, we do promotions like this, people go crazy. So yeah. I can't guarantee we'll be able to do this for the entire month of January because we have a kind of a limited supply, but it is a massive promotion. Again, enroll in any of our MAPS bundles and get a free t-shirt. For more information on that, you can go to mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here I am interviewing the very intelligent Dr. Zach Bush. Our audience, uh, quite a few of them came to our show to listen to us about, you know, building muscle, burning body fat, but we do talk a lot about the wellness aspect of it, and in particular, in the whole muscle building, fat burning world, nobody pays attention to that, and the products that people are advertised and, and given and that take, you know, for the workouts and stuff are just horrible for health, in particular gut health. Um, and like I was saying, I started using uh, Restore because um, it was recommended to me by um, Dr. Mercola when we had interviewed him. And profound uh, benefits uh, with my own personal gut health. Uh, it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing stuff. So before we get into that, like uh, if you wouldn't mind telling uh, our audience a little bit about your background, like how you started and what got you to where you're at now. Yeah, that's a very non-linear pathway, as I suppose almost everybody's life is. But uh, I started in uh, medical school just planning to be a family medicine doc, didn't really know what I was getting into, and then uh, discovered research along the way and got uh, really passionate about kind of being a part of developing and discovering stuff we hadn't known yet. And so that kind of became a passion of mine. And so I finished uh, medical school with some research in the brain and how it uh, responds to our hormones and med- modulates our mood and leads to mood disorders. And uh, during that time, I decided I was going to probably pursue the hormone medicine, which is endocrinology, uh, as a long-term specialty. So I came out to the University of Virginia and did a three-year residency in internal medicine, which is kind of the foundation of all adult medicine. So you help run everything from the bone marrow transplant unit and cancer center all the way to, you know, the the acute cardiac heart stuff uh, to the general medicine wards where you see a lot of pneumonia and infectious disease and complications of diabetes and the like. And so that was kind of the journey overall. Uh, And then once I finished my subspecialty in internal medicine, I uh, did a teaching year at the University of Virginia and spent a year uh, teaching medical school students and residents kind of how to go about pursuing that uh, pathway of uh, academic medicine and really pursuit of Western medicine, allopathic, very pharmaceutical minded uh, setting, and then moved on to endocrinology and metabolism for a few years and did research in cancer and tumor genesis and how tumors form and how how they kill themselves and developed some chemotherapy from vitamin A compounds that I was working with at the University of Virginia. And during that time, I was starting to realize that nutrition was uh, starting to come out in the literature as perhaps more powerful than any drug we'd come up with in the cancer realm. And so started to really dive into nutrition for the first time in a 17-year career of uh, pursuit of medicine and really was 
dumbfounded at what I was seeing out of the laboratory microscope as to kind of how things would change if we just changed the nutrient uh, environment around the cells and everything else. So got into nutrition big and left academia in 2010 to start a nutrition center for reversing chronic disease. And that became Revolution Health Center. And that was in Virginia. And I spent a couple of years there really intensively te- uh, teaching and treating patients with intense medical and uh, nutritional regimens for chronic disease and found that that was a pretty remarkable subset of these that no matter how healthy the food we fed them, they were actually getting worse, not better. And uh, we find this a lot in elite athletes as well as the chronically ill is that, man, here you are eating like top 1% of the world and you've got a massive amount of nutrient availability, you've got supplementation coming out the wazoo and there's just so much inflammation and distress and the vast majority of that manifests in the gut and in the neurologic system. And so it can be everything from kind of irritable bowel syndrome, lots of gassiness. It can be uh, chronic re- kidney stress. Uh, a lot of bodybuilders I've worked with over time have got chronic uh, kidney issues going on and the like. So that that uh, kind of kept pushing me down the avenue of, well, what, what is the secret then? If it's not nutrition, if it's not loading the body with nutrients, what's, what's the magic bullet or what's defining health? And that avenue took us down this extraordinary story away from human health and right into the bacteria and the fungi. It turns out that bacteria and fungi seem to be regulating far more than the the actual human system does to regulate our genomics, what genes turn on, which proteins we build in our body, uh, which what kind of health we are able to to manifest. And so that journey took us into uh, the last seven years of my life. So get into that further with the bacterial journey if you want. Yeah. So uh, let's take a step back for a second. So you had people who would come to you who were sick, uh, whether it be what chronic disease, like, you know, diabetes, for example, and you would change their diets completely. And what you're saying is there was a large subset that just wouldn't improve at all. Yeah. They, there was a subset that would, immediately improve and get would be better and would be a celebration. There was a, then a contingent, maybe third that would start to get a little bit better, but then plateau and never reach any sort of real health goal. And then there was a third that seemed to actually be getting worse symptomatically rather than better. And that was, that was the challenge that really drove me to ask the questions that led us down our pathway to the bacteria. Uh, this category of people that were really being, you know, compliant. And we see this a lot as doctors where we tell our patients to do something they go home and do it and they come back and they say it didn't work. And so our, our immediate assumption is they didn't do what we asked them to do. Right. And so we blame them. We act like they're somehow not doing, uh, doing enough. They're not working hard enough to get this thing to work or whatever it is. So, uh, anyway, uh, you know, I started to trust my patients and, you know, come to realize, you know what, they're, they're doing exactly what I'm asking them to do and they're getting worse. So what, what can that be? And at this point you started identifying that it had to do with their, with, the bacteria that was in their in their gut or that makes up their microbiome? Well, at this point, we started um, you know, asking questions about maybe there's a problem with the food. Uh, maybe there's something wrong in the plants. Is there something about kale that we're growing today that's causing people to bloat and have all these inflammatory reactions to one of the powerful superfoods on the planet? And uh, I was doing a lot of kale juicing and all this stuff and was seeing patients' inflammation markers go up, not down. And that, that really led us down the question of, well, what's in the plants, which, of course, led us to the next question, well, what's in the soil? And it was during that journey in the soil science that I discovered a molecule for myself. It's certainly an old molecule. It's been seen many times in, in human history, but it's, it's kind of a young coal. It's basically fossil soil that's been in the ground for about 50 million years. And it's largely composed of these carbon snowflake-like molecules, each one a little bit different than the next. And just by coincidence, that family of molecules looked a heck of a lot like the chemotherapy I'd been working with. And so it was an aha moment that, wow, we've been looking to medicine, uh, or rather looking to our plants for medicine for thousands of years. Uh, What if we start looking to the soil? And so what we found was that it was the bacteria and the fungi in the soil that was making this extraordinary family of molecules. And that started to help close the loop on how come the entire population has gotten so flippin' sick. I mean, it's just, you can't find a kid now that doesn't have a diagnosis. 46% of our children under the age of 12 have a chronic disease. And so it's just such a sick population. All of us have some sort of thing, whether it's migraines, chronic kidney issues, 
hypertension, you know, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, poor sleep quality, anxiety, major depression. These things have just become so prevalent in the society. And when you start to look at this secret of the bacteria, you start to realize, wow, we've really done the damage by losing the bacterial biome. And we've done that largely through antibiotic use on our food crops. Uh, the main antibiotic on the planet is this thing called glyphosate. It's oh, Roundup. Roundup. The, oh, yeah. yeah. That, and a lot of it, I was just about to ask you that because I know how um, prevalent uh, the use of glyphosates are. Um, in worldwide crops, but especially here in the U.S. And, uh, you know, it is true that glyphosates, and correct me if I'm wrong, that glyphosates don't necessarily interact with uh, human cells. I mean, you, 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 you know, you consume and it comes right out. But the pathway by which glyphosates work, I believe is called the shikamati, if I'm not mistaken, pathway. Um, is it, that's, that's present in bacteria as well, that particular pathway. So we're damaging... Okay, so so by spraying these all over the, the soil, we're damaging the bacteria that you're saying is so important in the formation of things that are important for the health of our plants and then ourselves. Is, is that play one of the biggest roles? Yeah, so the antibiotic effect, the way it kills bacteria and fungi and plants, and the reason it's such a potent herbicide or weed killer or plant killer is that it blocks that shikimate pathway that you mentioned there, and that's an enzyme pathway that makes the proteins that are essential for the human body to function. And some of those uh, essential amino acids, alanine, tryptophan, phenyl, I'm sorry, phenylalanine, tryptophan, tyrosine, these guys are made by the shikimate pathway. And those are much like the alphabet. We've got 26 letters in the English alphabet that allows us to spell 200,000 words. Same way, we've got 26 amino acid building blocks that help us build 200,000 proteins. And the vowels, if you will, well, the most critical eight of those uh, 26 letters are the essential amino acids. Those are ones the human body is not capable of making on its own. And those are made through the shikimate pathway. And so we've now sprayed a chemical at the rate of 2 billion kilograms or 4.5 billion pounds a year uh, into our soils and have killed the ability of the soil and the plants to make the essential amino acids. So we're missing the vowels in our alphabet uh, to build a healthy human body. And so we're literally truncating the ability to you know, put those pieces uh, together to create a fluent uh, alphabet, to create a fluent vocabulary of proteins and superstructure of the body. And this is why we've seen such a massive collapse of the human system. But it's also compounded by the fact that while it's diminishing the ability of bacteria to make those essential amino acids, those medicinals of the food, it's also killing the bacteria. So we're losing this massive ecosystem so quickly now. I, I fear that we've probably had mass extinction of a lot of species that will never know existed and will never recover on the planet. So uh, we've been so cavalier with the antibiotic use, not just in our crops with glyphosate, but also in our in our meat crops. And so uh, you, you take a look at the cattle industry, but the uh, worst is the, the pork industry. And then, of course, probably the granddaddy of them all is the chicken industry. And so the poultry industry, pork and, and cows, they're using about four times more antibiotic uh, than all the humans combined. And so we're just pumping an enormous amount of antibiotic in those animals in a very short lifespan, one, one and a half years for a cow or a pig. And for the chicken, you're looking at just six weeks being pounded with all these antibiotics. So uh, just an extraordinary amount of these chemicals and drugs in our environment have led to this huge collapse of the ecosystem which means that our soil and plants no longer have these complex carbon-based snowflakes that we discovered in 2012. And that's starting to look like a big problem. So you got a problem because you can't deliver nutrients to the plants. you got a problem because you're killing the bacteria themselves. Now we have a huge problem because our soils, plants, and our intestinal lining itself is not being reinforced by these complex carbon molecules that do cell-cell signaling or cell communication across the human system. Explain that for a second. When you say cell-cell communication and it, how this impacts uh, the, the, the human body, in particular the gut, um, why is that important, that cell-to-cell -cell communication, and what happens when we lose that? Is, that? is that the cause of some of the inflammation that we're getting in our gut? That's exactly right, yeah. So a couple things are happening simultaneously. Uh, when you lose communication, you lose the ability to repair the cell. 
And so cell, cellular repair and all of our mechanisms to kill that cell if it, in case it becomes disease, something like a cancer cell or something like that. So as we start to lose the, the cell-cell communication, we lose the kind of consciousness of the single cell and it starts either replicating inappropriately, as you'd see in cancer, or it just sits stagnant and is not doing its cellular repair. So we get this this kind of old pattern of cells that are just not turning over or turning over too slowly or are turning into precancerous cells or cancer cells. So that is largely happening due to this breakdown in communication that's happening across the system. One of the important things that communication does at the cellular level is it's turning on your DNA to make proteins. And what we're seeing is, is a sluggish protein synthesis from the cells, which means that as they're damaged by chemicals like Roundup, and in fact, Monsanto has been saying for a long time that it, it doesn't directly hurt human cells, but we're actually showing the opposite in our lab. We're showing that you get direct Roundup effect on the human gut, and it falls apart very quickly. It's damaging the Velcro between the cells, and so this huge coherent membrane suddenly collapses, and as that collapses, you get you know overwhelming introduction of material from your gut lining into your immune system, which sits right behind the gut. That's fascinating because you know I, we recently had um, a guest on our show who explained how you know when you eat something, it's not inside your body until you, it goes through your until your body basically absorbs it until it gets to the right part, your, you know, your gut is permeable and you absorb the right nutrients or whatever. But if that permeability is thrown off, you're basically exposing your body to whatever toxins uh, or chemicals or whatever's in the food, even things that may not have, it, you know, necessarily be bad for you, like, you know, complex proteins, but they may be getting absorbed at the wrong parts of the body. And so you develop immune reactions and all kinds of you know, crazy things start to happen. And uh, this this can happen all the way up to the blood-brain barrier, if I'm not mistaken. Is this correct? Yeah, you're spot on there. Yeah, you, you can imagine this, this surface area of your gut it starts at your nose and sinuses and goes all the way to the rectum there. So you got your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestines, large intestines, all the way down to the colon, uh, end of the colon there. And so you've got that huge uh, surface area, which measures somewhere around two tennis courts in surface area uh, is this massive membrane. It's made up of over a trillion cells that are all tied together by these tiny little Velcros, uh, Velcro proteins. And when we're lacking the bacteria, we don't make that Velcro protein effectively. And so we're sluggish to respond to this direct injury to the Velcro, and so that falls apart. And as soon as the gut lining starts to fall apart, like you say, you get a cascading effect across the system where the kidney tubules stop clearing uh, toxin and have a hard time holding on to proteins. You start to have protein leaks. You have a direct uh, injury to that blood-brain barrier, so everything in the bloodstream starts to overwhelm the neurologic system. You can get brain fog. You can get uh, poor sleep quality, poor sex drive, you know, the whole works. And so that's kind of the pattern that we're seeing clinically. Those are the, like, the leading causes of complaints in physicians' offices these days. And it looks to be all coming from this one phenomenon of losing our barrier systems, losing these healthy boundaries from the outside world into our immune system, from our bloodstream into our brain, from our blood into the kidney tubules. All these barrier systems are collapsing under the pressure of the roundup. In, in, the, in the recent past, I'd say probably the last maybe 15 years or so, um, you would hear, you know, well, you know, quote unquote wellness experts talk about this and talk about things like, you know, leaky gut syndrome. That was a term that was thrown around a while and was laughed at. And it seems like um, science is starting to prove some of these things to be true. Now, when you have someone like yourself, who you're a triple board certified physician, you, you're, you're, you have a science background, so you're not just some wellness blogger. And now you're talking about, you know, some of the dangers of products like, or, you know, chemicals like glyphosates you know, are you getting pushback? Like, are they saying, are, are you getting letters and stuff to stop talking about this stuff? Because you're not talking about tiny companies. These are massive organizations that that control or are tied to the entire food supply. Yeah. Yeah. And no, that's a very powerful uh, group politically, for sure. And, uh, you know, the answer is we've, we're not getting direct communication from them. I think that 
um, there's concern, you know, for, to validate us by addressing us. So right now we're getting the, the ignore us uh, syndrome here, but, uh, you know, the, we're getting the word out broadly now. So you know, I think they're always calculating, not just Monsanto, but it's every chemical company in the world now makes glyphosate. And so Monsanto was the company that kind of patented Roundup and took it for 30 years, but then 2007 it came off patent, and now all five of the big chemical companies in the U.S. and you know actually the vast majority of glyphosate made on the marketplace today is made in China, and so we have chemical companies all over the world that are competing for that industry. I think they feel a little bit untouchable at this point, so I don't think they're terribly concerned about truth. Uh, we've actually had a lot of truth about the dangers of Roundup for many years, and it hasn't affected you know public opinion yet, mm-hmm. but. I think that my hope is that, you know, programs like yours, you know, it's, this is a pretty big game shift for, um, you know, bloggers and podcasters uh, across the world from every different mindset and specialty starting to talk about probably the single biggest chemical problem we have on the planet. That's, that's what's going to change the sy- mm. system, not one doctor, not one science group, but ultimately the consumer demanding that they find out what the heck is in our food. And, and we're one of the few developed countries that haven't passed legislation to demand that we start labeling our, our food. No, I think, I think a lot of, uh, you know, it's, it's clear, it's, it's pretty obvious that we're in the middle of a health epidemic. Um, but I think mistakenly people believe it started with the obesity epidemic, um, which, you know, right around the 70s, I'd say six, 60, maybe 70s, 80s, where we started to see that, uh, you know, the, the obesity epidemic start to take off. However, farming practices uh, fundamentally changed much b- way before that. I, I, I think probably, when did they start using nitrates in the soils and, and were we able to kind of strip the soil? Was that 1940s? Yeah, right after World War II. Yeah, we started going to the petroleum-based uh, compounds. And so we started using oil and fossil fuels as a source for nitrogen, potassium, and, and um, phosphorus to, to get it. And it actually became known as the Green Revolution in the 1950s and 60s because they found out they're spraying all this nitrogen and phosphorus from oil onto our crops, and everything turned green. We suddenly had, like, these verdant fields that had just a decade previous been completely dead. Um, you remember the Dust Bowl stories that came out in the 1930s and everything. Mm-hmm. And we had completely killed the topsoil in the United States through poor farming practices in the early 1900s. And that led to the Dust Bowl. And instead of recovering that with good soil practice, we just started spraying, you know, these these simple uh, resources, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium on there. And we got green crops, but what we weren't growing is nutrient-dense food. Uh, the, as you can imagine, you know, good soil would have manganese and selenium and all these millions of trace minerals in there that would be fueling the bacteria and the fungi in the soil that would feed that to the plants and the plants would then sequester those nutrients and feed them to the bacteria of our gut. And then those bacteria would in turn liberate those nutrients and feed them to our system so that we can build, you know, strong bones, strong muscle, strong mind. And that whole system started to collapse as we started to increasingly depend on these chemical farming practices. Obviously what we got out of that was a bunch of weak plants. You don't feed your body well, your immune system goes weak. Same thing with with that plant. And so we started developing all these diseases for the plants. Lots of pests would come in. They'd develop viruses. They would develop uh, fungi problems. They'd have all these invasive issues going on. And then, of course, the weeds would start to move in because these were unhealthy crops. And instead of saying, wow, we should really fundamentally fix this problem, we just turned to the chemical companies again. They said, no problem, we'll... We'll give you more pesticide chemicals, more herbicide chemicals, and we'll keep keep things at bay for you. And so we've been in a, in a chemical warfare state, not just with Western medicine against the human body, but in Western agriculture, we've been in, you know, for 80 years now, fighting the, the good fight against nature, against, <laughs> you know, a sane ecosystem. Now, you know, hearing that the, the plant, that the soil and the plants are not as nutrient dense and hearing about how, you know, glyphosates, you know, reduce the production or prevent the production of key amino acids from either bacteria and, and the plants themselves. Can someone just take, you know, nutrient supplements and amino acids and correct that? Or does it go much deeper than that? Yeah, it's going quite a bit deeper than that. So uh, certainly getting, getting amino acids into the food chain is a very important piece. And if that supplementation 
uh, that can be helpful. But one interesting thing about supplementation is when you start taking single amino acids, you can quickly overwhelm the bacterial system that's supposed to be processing those amino acids. And so I think that it's it's really tricky to balance an amino acid intake if you have inadequate protein and we see, or I'm sorry, inadequate bacteria to handle that protein. And so we see this all the time in the kind of elite athlete and bodybuilder fitness environment where you have huge amounts of irritable bowel syndrome and gas and bloating and chronic loose stools versus constipation and all this stuff going on. And that's largely because we're forcing huge amounts of protein and amino acids into an environment that's inherently devoid of a lot of the bacteria that are necessary to process that intense data or that intense nutrient source. And so I think what we see again and again, when you add back in these carbon molecules made by the bacteria, you get this incredible burst of intelligence back at the gut lining. And so not only is the bacteria starting to proliferate and diversify, the the carbon molecules that are made by you know the soil, healthy soils and the healthy gut, they start actually increasing the protein synthesis of those Velcro-like tight junctions that hold the entire gut lining and the blood vessels all together. And so as you increase the density of that Velcro and you get that intelligent membrane back, then suddenly the amino acids can be handled. They can they can be kept on the correct side of the gut until the bacteria process them, make them bioavailable. They can be trafficked intelligently across that gut membrane and everything else. And so to have a chemical like glyphosate that both wipes out our bacteria and destroys that Velcro, we're just in constant overwhelm all the time. Now you you back out of that, you start to give back the, all of these carbon molecules. You don't have to supplement with amino acids because your bacteria are now extracting those from all kinds of food sources. And when they can't get it from the food sources, they can make them make it themselves. And so it's very cool that the bacteria actually have the shikimate pathway. And so they can make the essential amino acids for us, even if your food does not. And so it's a really beautiful world that we're starting to realize, man, these bacteria and fungi, when they're taking care of us, we're unbeatable. We, we cannot miss, we cannot be deficient in any, any nutrient because the bacteria and fungi can produce whatever is needed. And so that's, I think the magic that we experienced for thousands of years was not only was there intelligence and, and incredible nutrient and medicinal quality to our food, there was incredible intelligence and medicinal quality to the bacteria and fungi that were growing within our guts and on our skin and in every orifice of the body. We were just covered with this biome that was just brilliant. Now we're you know seeing the opposite where 47% of our children are being born sterilely by C-section. They never even see the mom's vaginal canal where they would inherit the bacteria that would help protect them. So they're born sterile. They adopt the, the hospital's bacteria flora instead of mom's flora. Then they're challenged for their whole life. Immediately they start into colic or poor sleep quality and poor digestive effect in the kiddo. Then they start getting ear infections. They get hit by antibiotics and get further sterilized. And so it's just this chronic long-term battle for most of the children now to, to maintain any sort of ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't help but you know, comment that it sounds so overwhelming, like all these things that we are doing to ourselves are, are hurting us. What are some ways we can protect ourselves? I wanted to talk about these carbon molecules you were bringing up, but before I do, can people protect themselves a little bit by doing things like eating organic, uh, non-processed type foods? Does that make a difference? Does that make enough of a difference to help? It does start moving the needle in the right direction for sure. So organic food is going to have a lower amount of the chemical residues of Roundup on it than your conventionally grown crop. However, unfortunately, we've dumped enough Roundup into our environment that we've got about 75% of our rainfall, about 75% of the air samples that are taken in areas where there is crops grown uh, contaminated. And so we're, it's literally raining on our crops no matter where we grow them with Roundup. And so it's very difficult at this stage within the United States to get away from that chemical residue, that, that chemical phenomenon. But we're certainly voting with our dollars to, you know, lessen the use of Roundup. And I'm very hopeful that with enough information, the consumer is going to radically change and demand, you know, the cessation of that spraying. The good news is Mother Earth looks like it can clean it up. Like the, the Earth, it, actually the bacteria and fungi are pretty good at decontaminating Roundup if we would just stop spraying it. It looks like within 30 to 50 years, we might be able to get their levels back down below where they're doing damage. So 
Holy cow. Earth can recover. 30 to 50 years. Son of a bitch. We've done a number, haven't we? Yeah, we've left a mark for sure. We've got quite a legacy. So, uh, yeah, and I, I've told people this before too. You know, eating organic doesn't mean you won't have, you know, residues from, the, from these chemicals. You'll just have lower amounts. So uh, it's, it's almost impossible to get away from. Now, you've referenced a couple times during this episode, uh, you're talking about these carbon molecules that, have identified, that you've identified that are important in cell signaling. Would you mind getting a little deeper into that? Like, what are these molecules and what do they do? And why aren't we, why don't we have them uh, or as many of them as we used to? Sure. Uh, so you could imagine a compost pile where you throw a orange peel or any kind of carbon material from your garden back into the uh, the pile of your compost, and that's broken down very quickly into soil. I mean, in 14 days, if you keep it aerated, everything's going to return to a soil state. What's happening in that natural composting that's happening in your garden or same thing happening in your gut. When you eat food, it's all got to be composted down. Uh, you'll notice a healthy gut, whatever's coming out in the toilet, never looks like what's on your plate. plate. <laughs> if it starts to, where you have intact food and you're not getting digestion of the food and you're, you're passing food that looks undigested, you know you've got massive uh, depletion of, of gut material there. So composting is happening all the time, the bacteria and fungi around us. But it turns out that the carbon molecules are pretty specific to each species of bacteria and fungi. And so if you're lacking biodiversity and if your ecosystem has gone from a couple hundred thousand bacteria species down to maybe to, you know a couple hundred species, suddenly you're going to have a whole different uh, system of communication. You're going to have a whole different system of protection uh, that's really deficient across the board. And I think that's what we're looking at in today's guide. You're looking at a a couple hundred species that are now become dominant, where there used to be tens of thousands of species dominant, or at least in a balanced state. Now we're seeing this kind of weed-like overgrowth of the intestines, and so this family of carbon molecules is getting narrower and narrower in its vocabulary. And this is leading to a decrease in the cell-cell signaling that we had mentioned earlier. And we're getting literally less instructions at the DNA level to build anything because much of that instruction doesn't come from the human cells. The instructions that build our body are actually coming from our environment. And so the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, all of this is coding and, and determining the behavior of our DNA. And it's increasingly looking like we can't get a clear signal of what to do with the DNA. We're not getting a robust response to any of that environmental stimulus or environmental communication because we're lacking that bacterial ecosystem that would that would create that wireless network. You can imagine this sort of like your cell phone. Your cell phone has, you know, this invisible wireless network that runs out to the nearest cell phone tower and is repeated all the way around the world at the speed of light. It's amazing technology. However, if you're more than seven miles from that cell phone tower, suddenly you you lose communication. Now, nothing happened to your cell. The, the cell phone is still completely functional. Nothing broke the computer. It still has the capacity to receive and transmit, but it's just lost the wireless communication, and it's now use, useless as a communication device. That's exactly the cell of your body. So the cell of your body has all the machinery to talk across systems, do cell repair, call in stem cells, call in the immune system. But if it loses that wireless network, boy, and it just sits there stagnant, not sure what's going on. And so it can't update its software, just like your cell phone starts to run slower. Errors start to happen, just starts to dysfunction across the board. And so that's been the extraordinary journey in a clinic is, you know, 2012, we started to isolate these carbon molecules out of fossil soils that are 50 million years old. There was an ecosystem on the planet 50 million years ago that's just unrivaled today. And so we've been extracting these huge networks of carbon molecules, this massive wireless network out of these fossil soils and putting this into our patients. And it, it's literally redefined our understanding of health. It's, it's pretty extraordinary for me as a, a research scientist to realize, wow, everything I ever studied in the lab, every single cell culture, all my understanding of cancer, all my understanding of cardiovascular disease, all of these things were determined. We created the model for how we thought these things were working in sterile Petri dishes. Mm. We never took into consideration the incredible bacterial biome, fungi, and 
viruses and their impact on these physiologies of you know, fundamental human health. So without some of these compounds, and we lose this ability for c- cells to communicate with each other, we basically lose our ability to heal ourselves. That's correct. That's it. So we're, you're starting to see you know, that we're living on a toxic planet. And of course, Roundup is only one of the many toxins we face, face of the day. So we're sitting on that toxic planet and then losing our entire system of defense, losing our system of repair and response, losing our system of regeneration through stem cell activity. We're just dialing down very quickly. And so you and many of your listeners are experiencing what everybody is, is, man, we are spending so much money now doing damage control. We spend so much money on our supplements, on our food, on the water we drink. You know, we're spending more money on water than wine at this point. Really good quality water is more expensive than a a bottle of wine. And so it's just extraordinary the cost of going into, you know, fostering and supporting health on this toxic planet. Now, there's a product that you help make that uh, help, that replaces or provides you with some of these uh, molecules that act as uh, the cell towers, if you will. Uh, would you mind yeah. getting into that a little bit? Cause I, cause I, now, I've personally, I have no affiliation with your company. I, I you know, don't make a dime off of talking about your product. Um, and, and my listeners know that I've had my own battles uh, with gut health and more recently, I my gut health is better than it's been in a long time, and there's a few things that I've done, and one of the things that I've done that I haven't really talked a whole lot about, mainly because I wanted to be sure if this was part of the reason why I've been feeling better, and I, I'm pretty sure it is, was using this product called Restore, which is not a probiotic. It's 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 what is it exactly? What is in Restore? What is it that I'm taking that's helping me feel so much better? Absolutely, yeah. So. The Restore is uh, the first dietary supplement to really harness uh, the communication capacity, these carbon molecules that we've been discussing. And so in that, the active ingredient is, is called terahydrite, and it's this family of complex carbon molecules that have now been uh, put through kind of a, a catalyst process to get the hydrogen binding right again. So now you have carbon binding oxygen and hydrogen and it's the release of that hydrogen ion that looks to be the big piece of the puzzle. And so as these carbon molecules go into your gut and go across your gut system and your immune system and beyond, they're releasing and absorbing hydrogen at a very fast rate, probably a millionth of a second at, at, at which this transition happens. And so this is very much like a digital signal of hydrogen going out into the body that's carried by these huge carbon molecules, each one kind of having its niche within this communication chain. And so what you experienced when you started taking Restore was that within a few hours, you started making more protein uh, along the gut lining. And so we've shown this again and again, small intestine and colon. As soon as Restore hits, you start to see an increased uh, production of Zon, uh, the ZO1. It's a protein that is coherent in, the, in that tight junction. It starts being produced very rapidly by the nucleus of all your cells that line your intestine. And so the Velcro just starts increasing very rapidly. Within a few hours, you've got, you know, 20, 30, 40% increase in your total body Velcro system going on. Within a few days, six days, it continues to improve and improve. Over that six-day period, you now have this very robust system that we is now resistant to Roundup. And so we've shown again and again that, you know, as, as you start adding Roundup, you destroy tight junctions. But if you have enough of these carbon molecules around, you actually become quite resistant to that injury to the point where we've taken it now to 20,000 times the amount that you would typically see in your diet, and you continue to do really profound tight junction uh, control. So really a neat story that, you know, here is Mother Nature being destroyed as we speak by our chemical industry that's destroying her soils. And yet 50 million years ago, she planted the antidote to our insanity again, in her soil. And so it's just a really cool story of grace, I think, in the way that Mother Nature and this earth is designed for not just our blessings, but also you know, designed for our insanity. It's yeah, cause, pretty in, impressive. Yeah, because I noticed uh, as I was taking it, it took, I really started to see improvements after about 30 to 60 days is when I really started to see improvements uh, in you know my digestion. And then as a result of that, um, you know, from a performance standpoint, just I felt much better in the gym. I felt stronger. I felt like, uh, you know, more energy, of course, because I was, you know, my, my, my gut 
um, is a lot healthier. So these again, these are this is basically I'm I'm when I take this I'm supplementing with things you're finding in ancient dirt, um, and it's not bacteria, it's not probiotics, it's just helping my cells communicate with each other. Um, are you guys conducting studies on this, and are you, what are you seeing in some of these studies? Are there any published that people can look up? Yeah, there's a number of uh, peer-reviewed journal articles that have been published around uh, these uh, molecules and the use of Restore to uh, manage the the Roundup injury as well as the gluten injury. And so this whole phenomenon of gluten sensitivity also ties back to Roundup. We would not have gluten sensitivity if we had no Roundup in the diet. And so um, both of those have been published. Uh, you can find those on our website. It's Restore the Number Four Life dot com. Restore for Life dot com. And uh, go to the science page there. You'll see some of those peer-reviewed journal articles. We have clinical trials ongoing. Um, some of the neat things that we've seen was in, within two weeks of starting the product, the amount of glyphosate that you have in your body that's peeing out uh, is reduced. And so you're, you're getting less and less of that penetration of the chemical in the first place into your system. And so that's an exciting piece we weren't actually expecting. We, we knew we were combating glyphosate, but we had no idea we were going to be able to actually reduce the amount of glyphosate that your body's seeing. And so those are some of the cool things the bacterial uh, communication network are dealing. In addition, we see this huge increase in glutathione. Glutathione is the main antioxidant that your body makes. And that is managing the inflammatory reaction to, to exercise, for example. So some 80, 85% of the total antioxidant in your body is glutathione. We give uh, the Restore product and you'll see some you know, 800-fold increase in glutathione being produced by the gut membrane and, and the cells there in the immune system. So over that first month that you were taking it, you got a huge reservoir built up of the, of the uh, antioxidant reservoir, you got a huge uh, reservoir of amino acids and essential nutrients built back up in the body, and you really proliferated the bacteria. And so it's not unusual over that first month to see a real bulking of your stools where you're suddenly having a couple bowel movements a day, much higher volume of the stools and soft, well-formed stools that are starting to, to really coil up in the bottom of the toilet and everything else because the volume is so significant. And that's because the bacteria are just proliferating like crazy. And that's what you want to see is this huge biome boost. And what you're getting there is something completely different than the probiotics that you mentioned a couple of times. A probiotic is you know, three species or seven species of bacteria that you take every day. And they're in copy uh, at, at a massive number. So you might be taking 35 billion to 50 billion. There's even a couple on the market now that are bragging 1 trillion copies of the same bacterial species. Well, imagine now this huge ecosystem, something like the Costa Rican jungle or, you know, anything else out there. And you start to uh, do the, go from, you know, hundreds of thousand species to a state of, probiotic use where you're suddenly taking three species at a trillion copies a day and it's just hammering this ecosystem into monoculture. And it's interesting to note that no clinical trials have ever uh, been done to show any benefit to long-term probiotic use. All the probiotic studies that have ever been done, which are actually quite few and far between, but those few that have been done have only been done for a couple weeks. And so if, I, I really have seen it in my own patients for, for decades that if you, with chronic use of probiotics, you certainly lose any benefit. Uh, but more importantly, you're probably losing uh, bacterial diversity and, and the intrinsic complexity of the gut. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's I I consider probiotics symptom care, but not really treating the root cause uh, of what's going on. I, I myself use probiotics on and off because uh, again, my gut issues, and I do notice a, a reduction in symptoms when I take them. But if I stop, everything goes back uh, to where it was before. But um, Anyhow, very, very fascinating conversation. Um, I think our listeners uh, are going to enjoy you know, a lot of what we talked about. We, we talked quite a bit about um, gut health and its importance in uh, pretty much everything, but it also in relationship to athletic performance and building muscle and burning body fat and some of the stuff that a lot of our listeners are, are really interested in. So I appreciate you coming on the show, uh, Dr. Bush. Where can people find you? I appreciate you having us on. Uh, the website, www.restore, the number four, life.com. And you can also find out more about our clinics and such at zachbushmd.com, Z-A-C-H-B-U-S-H.com, M-D.com. Much appreciated, Dr. Bush.
All right. Thanks for having me on. Best of health to all the listeners. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.